Storytelling is one of the most powerful skills you can learn. The people who have the most influence on this planet are good storytellers. Teachers use them to convey important concepts. Comedians use them to make us laugh. Companies use them to sell us their products. And politicians use them to campaign and take power. A recent study even found that good storytellers are seen as significantly more attractive and are even considered more important. So how exactly do you become a good storyteller? Well, every good story is told in the same exact exact format that is comprised of three parts. If you can learn and master these three parts, you can become a significantly better storyteller. The first part is the setup. This is where you set the scene for your story. You give the listener enough details for them to know what you're going to talk about. Think of it as the cover of a book. If you don't have a proper setup, a proper cover, people will not listen to your story. They're not going to pick up that book. You'll hear comments like, oh, you're so random or Haha, you're so weird. If you do not have a proper setup. What you want to make sure too is that your story is relatable to the subject at hand. For example, if my friends were talking about their crazy college roommates, I could bring up a story about my old roommate. If my friends were talking about people they looked up to in the past, I could bring in a story about my boss who I used to look up to. The second part is the content. It's here where you get to the meat of the story. You describe the events that occur. But if you spend too much time covering unnecessary details, people will quickly lose interest. I'm sure we've all met those people who just talk and talk and talk and never get to the point. It's safe to say people don't really listen to their stories. A good principle to remember here is kiss versus kill. Keep it short and simple versus keeping it long and lengthy. If a piece of information is not crucial for the story to make sense, do not include it. Think back to the last time you watched a good movie. What was going on in your head while you were watching this movie that made it so great? It might have been funny or beautiful, but the most important factor it had was tension. By building more and more tension, your listener gets more and more invested. They wonder, oh my god, what's going to happen? How will this story end? Now, in order to build tension, the meat of your story has to be interesting. The events that occur have to be something that doesn't normally happen. For example, you can't tell a story about you going to the supermarket and all that happens is that you buy groceries. There's no tension. The story is boring. If people stop paying attention halfway through your story, it's because you're either killing it or you're not building enough tension. The third and final part of a good story is the resolution. It's here where you release all of the tension you built up in the previous step. In comedy, the resolution is the punchline. In presentations, your resolution is your conclusion. If you don't properly resolve your story, people will not realize your story is done. Now I know that this is a lot to take in, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna analyze a couple of stories and break down exactly what part is what so you can get an idea of exactly how you should tell a story. <clears throat> I think it's very important to have a mentor you can look up to. The man who taught me everything I know about hustling, work ethic, chasing your dreams was my old sales manager. So one day he was out trying to make some sales. He knocks on the door and a guy opens up and says, what do you want? So my boss starts his pitch. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Jim. We did some updates in the area. I'm just here to talk to you about your internet. And the guy goes, oh. You're a salesman, right? Well, get the fuck off my porch. Now, the thing about being a good salesman is that you have to stay persistent. You'll be surprised how many extra sales you can make by just standing your ground. So my boss goes, look, I understand you're busy, but it's only going to take 30 seconds. So the guy reaches behind his back, pulls out a gun and pistol whips my boss right across the face. And you know what my boss said? OK, so now can we talk about your Internet? Man, I couldn't have asked for a better mentor. So if we take a look at this top part right here, this is the setup. The listener knows that I'm going to talk about a mentor of mine, someone who inspired me. If we take a look at the second part, this is the context, the meat of the story. What you'll notice is that I am only mentioning the most crucial details. I am not telling you about the weather that day or what time it is because frankly, none of that stuff is important for the story to make sense. What you'll also notice is that I throw in sound effects. This is something that a lot of good storytellers will do. They will add sound effects, facial expressions, and even change their voice in order to make the story seem more animated. The listener can see a clearer picture of exactly what is happening. 
This line over here. The thing about being a good salesman is that you have to stay persistent. This builds tension. The listener now knows that my boss is going to do something. And if we look at this line right here, and you know what my boss said, this line right here builds a tremendous amount of tension. The listener is thinking to himself, oh, I can feel a punchline coming. I wonder what it is. And that's where you hit them with the resolution. It closes up the whole story. It shows the listener why I looked up to my boss so much. And what you'll notice is that I throw in a line, I couldn't have asked for a better mentor. This is what's called a closing statement. It shows the listener that the story is now over. Here's another example. When I was in college, my roommate had a funny habit of hurting himself in the weirdest ways possible. He was by far the unluckiest person I had ever met in my life. So one day he comes back into our room looking really, really sad. So I say, Adam, what happened, man? He looks at me and says, oh man, my girlfriend just broke up with me. Well, do you want to talk about it? No, I'll be fine. So I was like, okay, I understand. Sometimes us guys need to get over things by ourselves. I turn around and go back onto my laptop and suddenly I hear, Aah! I turn around and Adam is clutching his arm and there's a knife about an inch deep into his hand. Blood's just spraying everywhere. It was crazy. So it turns out he had taken out his pocket knife and he threw it at the wall in frustration. The knife somehow bounced off the wall and stabbed him back in his own hand. I don't know what he did in his previous life because that man definitely did not have God's favor. So again, the first part of this story is the setup. The listener knows that we're going to talk about a roommate of mine who somehow hurts himself. The next part is the content. It's here where I describe what happens. You'll notice that this content is very dialogue heavy. When you have a dialogue heavy story, you have to change your voice and make it very animated. Give each character a slightly different voice so the listener knows who's speaking. The last part is the resolution. It closes this story and throws in a little joke about luck and karma. Almost all of the best storytellers out there will throw in a pinch of humor regardless of what type of story they are telling. If you want to learn more about humor, you guys can check out my video on humor, which I'll link to in the description below. Now everyone has a different style when it comes to telling stories, but you'll notice that the best storytellers will always follow this three-part format. If you want to get better at storytelling, the best way to do so is by practicing. So we're going to do a little exercise, a little challenge. In the comments below, try and write your own story. Try to follow all of the tips that I mentioned in this video as well as the three-part format. After posting your story, I'll give you some constructive criticism.